Hi guys, what is going on? And welcome to my complete beginner's guide to Conqueror's Blade. So, I've been playing Conqueror's Blade since closed beta now. It's been quite a long time. And I certainly feel like I've got the hang of the bulk of the game now. I kind of know all the core mechanics, know how everything works. And so lots of videos on lots of individual things, different units, uh, different sort of theory crafting on the game. But I kind of wanted to drag all the sort of more simple elements of that together into one video to make of one beginner's guide it's going to sort of walk you from the tutorial sort of into the early aspects of the game give you some pointers about where you're heading and not just cover things that the tutorial covers like you know how to move and how to attack but actually gives you some genuinely useful tips about where you want to be heading once you've completed the tutorial so to that end i have just created a new character i am level 12 evo test <laughs> is his name and I have just basically ran through the tutorial stuff now, uh, got all that sorted, and I've been basically sent to the to my first town. I've picked my region. I have picked uh, Ungavaria, so I am down here in Tyrol Varos, and I kind of want to walk you through now some of the various different aspects of the game. So perhaps the most common beginner question that comes up the most, I think, is what weapon class should I play? What hero should I be? and it's something that doesn't have a super simple straightforward answer. Now once you've done the tutorial, or, or if you haven't yet done the tutorial, as you go in you will find there is a, sort of like an arena in the tutorial which allows you to try out a, a few different weapon types, allows you to kind of pick the weapon class that you want to be. Now don't get too hung up on this, it's great to try out the different ones if you want to have a little bit of a play around with them, but until you really start taking them into proper combat situations, it's kind of hard to get a feel of uh, how your playstyle is going to fit. And it's important to know that you are not tied into that weapon class, even from early on. So, for example, I am currently a musket. You can see the musket there on my back. But if I go and use the P hotkey to take me to my character selection, it will normally bring you to this screen here. Um, if you then head over to the skills tab, you'll see uh, this is the musket and this is where I've got all my various upgrades for the musket. Currently got 140 skill points in the musket. But if I decided oh, I didn't really want to pick the musket, that was a, that was a mistake. Uh, what about if I now fancy playing as a glaive player? Well, you can do. Um, you normally get one unlock for free, so I can unlock this for zero mastery points. So if I unlock this selection now, you'll see now I have unlocked the glaive. Um, and from then on, oh, I even get another one for there. So you can just unlock all these different classes. And now the only thing I need to do to play this glaive is to actually get the weapon. So, so go to the shop, uh, buy the weapon, and I'll actually be, to be able to equip this. So I've just made it over to the armorer now, and this kind of leads on nicely to uh, hero equipment and hero crafting anyway. So as I was saying, I've just unlocked that glaive. I'm now at the armorer, and I'm going to head to the weapon wreck. And as you can see, there's a sort of a handful of stuff um, available to sell, uh, available for sale, and a steel glaive is one of them. So as we saw in the other bit, I've just unlocked that. So I can purchase this now for uh, 1800 bronze. So let's do that. Always spend bronze coin first because you're not likely to have any silver at this point, but silver is a lot more valuable. So I've just unlocked that. So I've now got this here. Uh, also, interestingly, uh, as new players, you're often going to be getting these Sharp Mind gift packs. It's a way just to help you sort of boost yourself up a little bit early on. Well worth opening, because if nothing else, it gives you a sort of a good amount of bronze. I think it gives you a thousand bronze, and that keeps going up with your level. So make sure you uh, equip those. Um, and then we've got our Steel Glaive. So let's just equip that. And now I am a Glaive player. <laughs> the only thing you need to take into consideration with this is the fact that some uh, classes have uh, specific armor type limitations. So, uh, for example, uh, like a bow and a short bow require the light armor type to be able to use them. Nadachi is a medium armor type. And for example, poleaxe and longsword are heavy armor types. So if it limits you from equipping a weapon, it's more than likely just because you've either got to unlock it in this menu here, or you're being limited by the armor type that it requires. Not a massive problem, just something to bear in mind if that's something that sort of holds you up or catches you out slightly. So once you've kind of settled in on your class a little bit more, you're going to want to upgrade that class's uh, uh, special skill abilities. So kind of we've touched on this page very briefly and it's touched on kind of slightly in the tutorial, uh, but it missed out a few key details, I think. So you have three uh, core abilities to choose from. 
Now, it's not super easy to know which one you're going to want for each class. There's no easy way around that. I recommend perhaps watching some of my other videos, particularly if you're a Poleaxe player, because I kind of touch on this, but I also touch on it in some of the other stuff as well. But for example, if I was playing this Glaive, uh, I like Arc of Steel. I would be keeping that and I would be working to upgrade this up towards level 3 along this line here. Then the other one, Breaker of Shields. I don't think it's such a bad ability. I'd probably be keeping this as well. So I'd probably be working to upgrade this down to until I get to level 3 here. And then finally, I don't like Heat of Battle or Gods of Battle. So I would probably be going for Warlord's Greeting. But for example, to get that, I've actually got to research a fair bit of stuff. So I need 20 points for this. Um, I've also got to get 40 points for that before I can even make it to the first Warlord's Greeting. And as you can see, as I go down the tech tree more and more to get to Warlord's Greeting 3, I actually have to also research the Gods of Battle tech tree. So there's often quite a little bit to go to get to some of these points. And that's uh, for the core three skills. If you want to be getting them upgraded, I personally would try and avoid spending your mastery points. These are kind of like free experience. You can spend it on any of the uh, various heroes but every time you play in battle you'll earn um, uh, skill points for the specific hero that you're playing so if you take the glaive into battle you'll earn glaive skill points up here you can spend these upgrading your tech trees and then you'll notice at the very end you have um, a spare slot but it doesn't let you uh, equip anything in it properly you can you can move it around but you're always going to have one spare uh, so why is that well the t slot um, or any slot you want, but normally most people use the T slot, is for your ultimate ability. And you have two to choose from for each class. In this case of the Glaive, there is Flying Reaper, and there is Hail of Blades. So one, there's a fair bit of research to actually get to the start of these lines. And when you get to the start of these lines, you'll see you actually require something else. You require 1200 mastery points, but you also require five skill pages. Okay, what are skill pages? They are basically just a, a crafting requirement. They are sort of a, uh, a page from a manuscript that helps teach you how to learn some of these abilities. And there are a handful of ways you can learn them. Uh, firstly, normally in the evenings, um, twice a week, there is something called Deathmatch. Um, I think it starts at 7pm uh, GMT my time. Um, so you'd have to sort of check the calendar to see when it falls for your time. If you're in North America time, it's different to European, etc. And if you fight in deathmatches, they normally run for about two hours, and they're just a series of hero v hero skirmishes, no units at all, and there's a good chance that if you win on your deathmatch, you'll earn yourself a skill page. Uh, another way is if you go to your weekly quest, so if you press L to bring up your quest log, go over to your weekly quest, you will see that as you move down these, um, you'll see um, just below Volkies, a fragile skill book times one, um, fragile skill book times two, and fragile skill book times two. And you'll see that by, by earning them, you can then um, uh, use them to get skill pages. You're also able to buy them off the market. If you press the V hotkey to get yourself to the market, you can then um, uh, find uh, skill pages in the, in the market. For example, if I get items, skill pages, you'll see they're currently for sale. They are quite expensive. This is not bronze, this is silver. So one uh, skill page is costing you the minimum the cheapest 8750 silver so they are quite expensive to buy off the market i wouldn't recommend trying to buy a whole lot of the market if you get to four and you have a little bit of spare silver it sometimes might be worth buying that final one um but it's not super easy they are also sometimes possible to find in the open world and you can also get them if your households land but i'll cover those two later on when we move sort of outside into the open world so we are starting to get there now and we are heading towards our getting into our first battle and covering that. But there are a few couple of other important points that I want to cover before we get there. Firstly, attribute points. Um, again, quite a complex issue which covers uh, quite a range of different things. And I have a separate video of it. And if I remember, I will link that in the um, comments down below. And I'd recommend you watch that to learn kind of how it all works. But in effect, each attribute point uh, benefits different things in the very broadest unexplained sense. If you're a heavy armor user, go for armor. If you're a ranged player, go for agility. Um, and anything else, uh, I'd probably look more towards strength. Strength basically increases your uh, slashing um, damage. Agility increases your piercing damage. So for example, as a glaive user, I am a dominantly a slashing damage based user, so I want to have increased slashing damage. As a ranged player, generally you do piercing damage, so therefore you want increased piercing damage. 
and as a heavy armor user it increases your tank quite a lot toughness generally i would ignore there are some arguments around longsword and shield but without getting too into that um, i think generally speaking toughness is not going to be a very suitable class so for me uh, i'm just going to stick some points here look over into my strength apply the points and that's kind of all set there once you reach level 60 you will not get any more points you will however find you get some personal histories along the way which you can use to reset these points if you uh, change hero class or if you feel you've made a mistake in how you deploy those points or if you just want to try some different layouts and configurations so perhaps the final really big thing to cover before we get into battle is units so units are probably even more important than you as a commander as a hero because units are really what you take into battle and what enables you to sort of exert your will against other heroes and other units. So um, now the game's progressed a little bit, they seem to give you two uh, three decent quality units um, as you load in, as you do your first tutorial. These are the Iron Cap Swordsman and your Domain Spearman. So if we go over to the unit tech tree, we can kind of see where they fall. You see they've given you these uh, Iron Cap Swordsman here. Now, interestingly, as a side note, it does mean they, they, even though they give you the unit, they don't give you the unlocks that go with it. So even if you want to progress and sort of do any of these um, upgrades here, you do actually have to still do some of the technology upgrades. These little nodes here enable you to get to things like the Sword Militia, which is the unit uh, before the Iron Cap Swordsman. So you still actually have to unlock these with your honor. So as you unlock units, you need honor to do so. You can see this up here. I have 147 honor. You get honor from a whole host of things, from uh, doing quests. You can head over to our quest log. You can see um, Break the Bowman. If I slay 18 archers in match battles, I will get 200 honor, 500 bronze, and a bit of hero experience. So you can see I can then go and spend that honor on this tech tree to unlock myself new units. Also get honor after each battle, along with bronze. You get honor for doing weekly quests. Um, you get honor for doing different battle types. There are 101 different ways of earning honor. So that honor is then spent on this tech tree. Obviously, some of the low tier stuff you're seeing, you should be able to unlock pretty early on. Like for an example, Sword Militia should only be 500 honor. Um, and plus, I think you've got 10 honor for the elements of sword play. Things like this are kind of worth researching whether you use it or not. Because increased swords unit slashing defense by 3%. For 10 honor, that increase is also going to affect your iron cap swordsman. Because these are classed as a sword unit. So things like that, some of these nodes can be worth upgrading. Uh, but when you start to get to the higher tier things, you know, Iron Reapers, 25,000 honor. Particularly some of the cavalry tech trees where you've got to get down to, say, like the Cataphract Lancers. 25,000 honor for that. Then you've got, you know, uh, 12,000 honor for the node upgrade. You've got three upgrades here at 3,500 honor. The Yeoman. Uh, so you can see how things can take quite a long time to research. Although they have recently made it somewhat easier for newer players to research this stuff. So there is no super easy um, uh, way for me to advise which units for you to pick because it all kind of a lot of them have their own specific goals and playstyles and they kind of suit different people. I actually did a video on this which again if I remember I'll try and link in the description down below um, kind of covering this in more detail but to give you a very few sort of tentative ideas. Uh, Pike Militia once you get their veterancy line upgraded which we'll touch on in a minute are a very nice very cheap low tier unit to start with. But the Iron Cap Swordsman, again, a unit worth uh, uh, sort of levelling up. They have quite a nice charge. Prefecture Guards, later on, once you get a little bit further down the line and unlock the Silver Era, again, are quite a nice unit. And it's often worth going down this spear line here and be pretty decent because these guys uh, provide very tough little shield walls, which, while they don't do much damage, are very hard for the enemy to crack. Uh, Archer-wise, perhaps maybe something like the Prefecture Archers down here in the Silver Era are a very nice unit at the moment although again all this is kind of subject to change as the game gets balanced units gets buffed and nerfed and you kind of have to keep up to date with some of the patch information to kind of see how things are evolving on a continual basis if you want a cavalry low tier cavalry units either sort of the the iron cap scout cavalry or the quarterliers are great sort of low tier chivalric, chivalric uh, era units although uh, cavalry can be a little bit more expensive to maintain because you also have to give them horses as well as unit kits so then we move on to the barracks. Um, so once you unlock a unit, um, I don't know if I have anything unlocked that I could build at the moment. I haven't built any woodcutters. So you could just go down here. You can see if we look at the unit tech tree that I've actually unlocked these woodcutters down here. They are a half star unit. 
a really basic crappy little woodcutter unit not really good for anything but if we head over to the barracks i can still build these woodcutters it cost me 1300 to build them uh yes don't that's fine and there we go we have a unit of woodcutters in our barracks so i can now take these into battle with me now you have to bear in mind you have a limited number of barrack slots so currently we have eight I believe, if I remember correctly, by the time you get to level 60, you can expect to have maybe around 20 barrack slots. You, after that, you will not get any more barrack slots for free. You will have to buy them. They're purchased available through expansion permits, which are available for sale in the shop. Um, I think it works out as about five, five to six euros for five. Um, so you will not find any other ways currently available in the game to earn these for free. So you've got to bear in mind that you do have a basically a limited number of units unless you're prepared to spend a small amount of money on the game. So you may want to think carefully about what you research when you find units that you don't really like. You know, remember which ones they are, so maybe you might want to disband them at a later point to make way for fresh units. The other thing to consider is units, these two aside, because these two are so low tier they don't actually have unit kits, but any other units like these have what is called unit kits. You'll see them down here, their status. They're currently 100 out of 100. Um, ah, but my Domain Spearmen have actually taken some damage. So when you use them in battle, and some of them get killed in battle, there becomes a percentage chance that they'll take a little bit of status damage down here. Uh, because one of them got killed, some of their equipment got damaged, etc. And you have to repair this. So you can see down here, it's 97 out of 100. You have to click this little plus, and you see they've lost one kit. I can either search the market to buy them for silver, or you can just pay the bronze cost that it currently costs to resupply one kit 600 bronze. But this can eat into your and the amount of bronze you're earning from battles rather quickly. You have to bear that in mind and you can soon find yourself running out of bronze. You can run these down to 50 out of 100. Once you get below 50 out of 100, their um, fighting capacity gets much reduced. And then once you get below 20, you can no longer take them into battle. But it's worth trying to keep on top of these unit kits. I try and keep them at 100%, uh, you know, 100 out of 100 all the time where I can. It doesn't automatically resupply. You actually have to manually go through and make sure you, uh, you know, re-top up everyone's unit kits all the time. Um, so the final thing to touch on is veterancy lines. So you can see here these two units are level one, but both my iron cap swordsman and my domain spearman are level two. So, for example, if we click on these uh, Domain Spearmen, you'll see over here on the right there's a button called Veterancy. And it will open up this little tech tree here. So every time a unit levels up, you can see their experience bar here. They've got 8 out of 6,000. So once they get to 6,000, they'll become level 3. They will gain a Veterancy point up till their maximum level. And you can then uh, spend that Veterancy point going down one of these uh, tech trees. And each one kind of has its own uh, specific uh, bonuses. So here... The top tech tree seems to be much more towards uh, defense. Each level increases blocking, four more soldiers to the unit, uh, reduced uh, damage taken when armor pierced, etc, etc. Each one obviously makes them a stronger unit. And then down the bottom, this one seems to be more focused towards damage. Uh, increased piercing damage, increased damage dealt by 12%, minimum damage, and so on and so on. And so you basically often have a choice between which veterancy lines you want to go down. The correct one because it often is a correct one for every unit, isn't always that easy to determine. I would certainly recommend if you sort of got get, didn't get particularly into like the silver era units, check out my channel. You'll find quite a few videos. I've normally covered not every unit, but I've certainly started to cover quite a few of them by this point. Um, and I'll sort of give you some indication of which veterancy line. For me, just off the cuff, I'd probably look to be going down this bottom one for the extra damage. The uh, little bit of uh, uh, blocking increase doesn't seem that high along this line. So for me, I think this would be probably the one to go down. Um, and you'll probably only have enough um, veterancy points to go down one complete line. You see, their maximum level of these guys is 15. And I suspect you will find that this point here would be level 15. That'll be your 15th veterancy point uh, on the final one on this line. So that's basically how units work. It's how you research them in the unit tech tree. It's how you build them in the barracks. And then you can upgrade them in the barracks as well. You can ignore the technology tab, but that's something that uh, to do with the open world, but not really very relevant. All or builds is a new feature that just enables you to pre-select your units so that when you go into battle, you can have your loadout ready rather than having to select it on the loadout screen. You don't need to stress about this if you don't want to. You can set it up if you want to. Currently, because we don't actually reach our current 500 leadership cap, I can put everything in there. So I think that's really most of the stuff before we hop into battle. The last few things to touch on are just in the settings. 
uh, camera, either in normal mode, it's nicer. Make sure you ride with keys. Trying to use your horse with a mouse is absolutely horrific. You want to be using WASD. It is so much nicer. Uh, the final perhaps thing to say is make sure you do these uh, main story quests. They are really good ways of getting stuff unlocked. For example, this one, I might go and unlock this one now. It will unlock you the Pike Militia, which I talked about, which is a great unit that you really want to be working on. Um, and some Iron Cab Archers that will give you a couple of other low-tier units, which you can then take into battle with you. Because you'll find there's quite a few of these main story quests, particularly in the low levels. As soon as they come available, they are well worth doing because they give you quite a few bonuses. So I'm probably going to go and complete this daily drill now. Um, and then we shall hop into a battle and actually take a look at some of the things we want to be considering when we're in battle. So we have loaded into the first battle. As you can see, we kind of um, have the options here to take which troops we want. This also preloads in that, that loadout we built earlier on. But I can sort of change units, I could change these, um, these bowmen for a pike militia, I could remove them entirely, um, I could pick cavalry, I could pick whatever units I want. This is where you decide the loadout of the units you're going to take in battle, and the one you click is the first one you'll spawn in with. I'm going to start with the Iron Cap Swordsman on this battle, because I feel like it's quite a good um, initial unit, it has a nice charge, which can be kind of useful early on to kind of hit out some of the enemy units, particularly when, if you look at our team, so many people have brought archers, the enemy team may have done the same, and one of the best um, ways of taking out archers is to get up close with them with swordsmen. You also have to, when you get into battle, you'll see you have an option of um, different formations you can select with your units through, through F1, F2 and F3. Again, something that you kind of have to learn. I'm going to go for quite a tight formation here with these guys initially, so I get that sort of nice hard-hitting charge. So this is a field battle, as we can see on the map. And there are three points, A, B, and C, and it's basically capture the flag. So whoever holds two of the three points will start ticking down the enemy's score. So for example, we are now capturing A. If we also capture B, uh, which we're not doing, the enemy is now capturing B. But if we had captured B, you will see how kind of that works. The enemy here on his horse, uh, he has gone far too deep and far too alone. So we should be able to kill him pretty easily. There we go. He came straight into my unit. My unit is strong enough to deal with a hero on his own. We can take on one-man people. Looks like there's a group of enemies here. This is probably his unit by the looks of it. And now he has died. His unit is running away. We get a few seconds to attack them before he despawns. I'm not going to be able to get to him in time. Maybe this guy. <laughs> Annihilated. So they'll now despawn in a minute. There they go. So you can kill units as they run. So killing enemy heroes is often a great way of... Um, dealing with enemy units because once the enemy hero is dead um, normally after sort of 10 seconds something like that the unit will run away so let's capture this supply point here this guy is going to make a very similar mistake to the last guy and come in far too easy so too early Get around the back of him push him into the unit and there we go he is dead and out okay so we've got some enemy pipe militia coming in here so i'm going to go for a charge look there now Again, this guy's gone too deep. Come and get him. We can. He is down. Try and deal with these guys. I'm leaving my unit just to do the fighting at the moment. Ooh, got hit a little bit myself there. Going for a knockdown on him. And you see I'm using my abilities all the time. And I'm using my W, A, S and D keys to roll out the way. So when I get a guy stunned like this, I'm keeping up the attack. He's just getting pinned into the unit. Nothing he can do. But as soon as things go wrong, I just double back up and roll out of the way to give myself some safety. And then now we're fighting on against these unit of enemy domain pikemen. But we are starting to get overwhelmed here now. See, I'm a bit far forward. So there's no allied troops here. So this could now could be started to be considered a bit of a mistake. So I'm now going to want to try and, if I can, escape. Because my unit is dead. Um, I'm too far forward. But yeah, look, it's given our team, by the looks of it, time to try and capture the B-point. Are we going to get it? We did. Nice. Good job, team. And now because we've captured that, you can see in the top corner... The enemy score is now ticking down. So to get a fresh unit, you need to go to a supply point. Doesn't look like our team has yet captured this one. So let's try and capture this one. If we can before any enemies turn up. I'm just going to tap on the H key to get myself healing a little bit. Be careful to try not to get interrupted on these, um, these things like this. I'm just going to stay on the point for the moment. I want to try and capture this point before these enemies interrupt me. But they didn't, unfortunately. Um, let's get that guy down. So again, I'm making use of my um, abilities. We are starting to get a little bit outnumbered here, though, again. Most of the enemy team seems to <laughs> come to come to me. 
deal with some of these um, enemy, enemy units here. But ideally, we want to be trying to deal with the enemy heroes. Try and get that guy down. Oh, now we're in trouble. And I've got myself too deep. I don't think I'll get out of that one. And there we go. And I've gone down. But for our first life, we managed to kill seven enemy heroes and 35 enemy units. Which is not too bad. So I'm dead. I'll wait for the respawn timer. And then I can spawn in. But obviously, my unit is now dead. So I can't pick them. So I've got to pick a fresh unit. So let's go for these domain spearmen. Or sword. Um, sword? Spear and shield even, guys. And we currently have lost all the points on the map. So we are now losing five ticks a second. So we really need to recapture something and fast if we want to stand a chance of not losing this battle. Let's get myself pushed straight back up. Try and get to this A point here. Get this captured. Okay, so we're capturing. We see we've got an enemy unit on the way in. My unit probably isn't going to make it here in time. And this enemy probably is going to get in time to get the interrupt in. But we're just going to have to kill him and deal with that accordingly. He's, he is too far forward. He's going to die. Whether he knows it yet, I'm not sure. And there we go. He's dead. Right. Now let's try and deal with the enemy unit. I'm trying to form a shield wall because these, these guys work best. If we get a little shield wall up like this, these enemy units, look, they just get decimated against my formation because that's the benefit of shield walls. Okay, now he is dead. We've got our unit here. Let's get on point. Let's get this capture sorted because we really need to recapture this point and super fast. And this isn't going to stop us from losing our score because you see we'll just go from ticking down at five to ticking down at two. There's an enemy coming in, but we have the capture. Okay, that's good. Um, so we could think about pushing on to the B point now. We can have an overview map if we press the Z key. That takes us out into sort of a... Um, a bit of a strategic view. So it's kind of good if you're not sure about where any enemies are, something like that. You just don't want to be doing what so many of these people do, which is just think their hero is the most easy to use thing or the most important thing in a battle. Your unit is the most important thing. Look how by working with my unit, I can easily kill these enemies. It's just not a troll problem for me. So let's get our wall set up here. And start to push through. Oh, our wall's having a bit of a hard time on this flank here. As I, so am I, as I'm getting kicked to pieces badly. Let's get that enemy guy down there. Try and get some kills on that guy. And let's push into the B point. I'm just going to go in with my unit now. Quite a few enemies here. It may be worth trying to think about setting up a wall. Try and get it positioned with the right keys. And then try and basically hold the line. Trying to stop these people from flanking around behind my wall. Because once they get behind, they're going to do a lot more damage. But you can see my health is starting to run down quite low now. Particularly as these enemy units here are also getting on the edge of my wall and killing my unit. I've got to try and be conscious of my health. But I'm also trying to uh, protect my, my unit as well. And perhaps get that guy down. There we go, that's his dead. Yeah, I'm trying to avoid this guy now because I know he's trying to kill me. Going for a stun attack block him slightly. I'm going to go for the block. There we go. We've got enough heroes here to take him out. We could really now do with getting onto the cap point if we can. We could also really now do with healing as well. I might just pull back slightly and go for a sneaky little heal. If you get hit while you are healing, you will um, die. You will no, you know, you might die, but you will get interrupted in your heal. It will turn off and you'll have to wait the 60 second cooldown for it to come back on again. So it looks like we've got quite a few enemies threatening the A point now. So I'm going to head up here just to make sure this is secure. Because we don't want to lose the A point. Look at all the enemy heroes coming in. We haven't got much in the way of friendly units here. I'm going to lose my horse. Let's try and get out of the way. Okay, we have now captured all the points. Okay, that's one down because he was just too low a health. Now I'm in trouble though. I'm going to go for my stun immunity. Trying to, uh, just trying to delay the capture of that A point so we can take advantage of it fully. But unfortunately, we are dead. So we get another cooldown timer before we can respawn in. And of course, we have now lost our domain uh, 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 domain spearmen. So we're down either down to archers or some of our peasant units. Um, I think I'm probably just going to go with my woodcutters. Low level archers sort of in games like this. I don't always seem to work all that well in my opinion. Looks like the quite a few enemies on the B point, and yeah, they're going in for the capture look. So we really want to be pushing over here to try and intercept that capture if we can. Woodcutter's coming along a bit slowly. Keep pushing.
pushing down here. So there's an enemy archer here at the back, an enemy archer hero. Ooh, nope, a bit too far forwards there for me at the moment. Let's pull back to the unit. We need a little bit more support. Try and get in some of these people down. Low health. Oh, can't get the hit. There we go. One down. Two down. Try and work our way towards this hero. He's killing quite a few of my units, but he's going to go down in a minute. Get the uh, jab in there with our little butt kick with the back of our glaive, and he's down. Nice. So we can continue to work this. You see the timer on the battle, and we've managed to effectively protect the B point there by bringing in our unit. We can then basically lower this guy down and get him stunned and blocked in with our unit to secure the B point. So we have lost the C point there on the flank. I think for now, I'm, I'm happy just to, to accept that. We don't have very many points left. We've only got 104 points, so we really can't afford to lose another point. Because if we do, then it's pretty much game over for us. This guy again going bold, trying to get into my unit, trying to get unit kills. But that's him down. Thank you. A little bit of support there from my allies. So I'm just trying to watch the minimap, trying to pay sort of a decent amount of situational awareness. Because I want to win this game. Um got quite a few teammates here now so i'm probably more thinking about being concerned about the a point in case anyone thinks about sneaking up there so i might sort of hover around here a little bit although i do see a uh, an allied hero over there at the moment and he hasn't spotted any enemies so perhaps initially it's looking pretty good now he's going to try and protect the points until the end of this field battle so we've got 200 points so we are starting to claw back but we are still at a disadvantage at the moment we could still end up losing this. But so far, so good for us. Um, we've had a 17 hero kills and 107 unit kills. Obviously, you have to bear in mind that I've been playing this game a long time. A little bit for me, in this case, it's a little bit cruel. It's a bit like sort of seal clubbing. It's not, not a particularly uh, a fair matchup. But as you play this, you will find initially it is quite hard. But the more you play, the easier it should get. It should start to feel a bit more natural. And you should hopefully start to get the hang of how uh, a lot of the combat mechanics work. And just the more you play, the sort of easier it will become. Now, if I capture this supply point, I think it gives us a 20-point bonus against the enemy. So, probably worth me sneaking on here. Because it doesn't look like our B point is immediately under threat. And I think I'd see anyone trying to sneak around to my A point. So, I think it's worth me capturing this. Bring our unit over. You can also heal units in a supply point. You can see the unit of health of my unit down here. And as I take them into the supply point, it starts to go up. So, there we go. We won the battle. Um, and then we get to this post-battle screen. So we see how much bronze we earned. Um, I'm running a premium account on my um, account as a general. So it copies across to my secondary units. Most of you, I'm assuming particularly new players, won't be running a premium account. So you're not going to have this uh, extra bonus here. But you'll have the base reward, 2,000 bronze. There's the honour there we earned, 91 honour. Our, our hero experience and then our unit experience. Um, and then earned glory for the season pass as well. You can see also um, we managed to promote a unit of our woodcutters and we've also got some recruit boots which actually so in this case are much better than our currently existing boots but if they're not you can break this stuff down for crafting materials which is something that we might touch on at a later point in this video we can also see our unit stats who did what so our domain spearmen here they killed one hero and 30 enemy units we've got one hero and 26 enemy units there with our iron caps and two even with our peasants managed to kill two heroes so they're in you know, you can do pretty well even with bad units if you command them properly. So anyway, let's hop out of this and we'll move on perhaps to looking at sort of the rewards from that and then looking a little bit at the open world. Just touching on that before we finish this video because otherwise it's going to go on forever. So the final area I want to cover in this video because it was going to be over soon, we're almost there, <laughs> is the open world. So once you're uh, when you're back in the city, if you head over to the Watchman, you can find him on this little sign down here, this little signpost and interact with him, you'll see there's an option to leave the fief. So when you do so, you certainly want to take some units with you, most likely, uh, particularly if you're going to be venturing outside of the safe zone. So I'll perhaps just take my, um, my domain pikemen and my guys there. The more units you take with you, the more food you will consume. And resupplying your food costs bronze, so there's sort of an element of risk to that. So let's leave with that. So you'll see we should now head outside of the city. And then you will find yourself spawning outside. If you're in the south region, if you're in Ungavaria like me, you'll find yourself spawning out of side of Turo Varos. But depending on which region, if you're north in Ostaria, you'll spawn outside of Orgolia. Um, if you're over here in Maoyang, so it's um, Daichang in the bottom, or Anliang in Maoyang, 
and so you'll spawn in your regional capital. And this is the open world. You can see it. It's currently very snowy and dark, and we're in a blizzard. And you can see other players on the map. So obviously everyone spawns in at this point where everyone is sat on. So you're represented by the yellow, so it's kind of easier to identify yourself. And you can see the area around you. Now the first thing, the most important thing to know, is the blue zone, so this boundary all around here, is the safe zone. You cannot be attacked by any other players while you're inside this blue line. So this is the safe zone. You'll also consume food at a slower rate than outside of the zone because it's considered friendly territory. So that's something really important. If you're going to be leaving this zone, you need to be extra careful. Now the next useful thing to know is these little abandoned crates. They take many forms, not always abandoned crates. Sometimes they're derelict huts and things like this. They glow with this slightly golden glow to them. You can interact with these. These are just sort of random little loot boxes around the world. You can search them and you get random small little prizes. So 236 sheepskin. Not particularly useful, but occasionally you get nice drops from them. So they are worth picking up if you're passing by to them. So what can you do in the open world? Why is it worth um, exploring? Well, um, there are a handful of major things. First one is you can gather resources from the open world. So the resources are these nodes here. For example, Dignite Copper Mine. Uh, looks like there is a farm there, a manorial farm. There's some horses over there. And these resources can be used to then craft unit kits. So rather than paying that 600 bronze to restore that uh, domain pikeman kit, you could then, instead, you could mine resources um, and then um, you know, use that to craft kits instead. Now, I'm not going to go into a whole unit crafting guide in this video um, because it's another quite a long topic and unless this video is going to become an hour long, <laughs> which I'm trying to avoid, we're not going to touch on that. But effectively, this is one of the main benefits of the open world because you can mine these resource nodes. The other benefit is, of course, you can be a bit of a bandit. Once you go outside of the blue zone, much as you can be attacked, you can attack other people. As a low-level player, I certainly wouldn't recommend this. You know, I'm level nearly level 400 on my main account. If you attack me at a level 20, you know, Roma, you will not stand a chance. <laughs> so it's not worth doing that quite necessarily at this point, but it is something that is worth bearing in mind for the future, and it's worth knowing about that other people can sort of hunt you down once you leave the blue zone. And the other main thing about it is um, territory wars. This is not something you're likely to get involved in initially, but as you start to get slightly higher up your levels, maybe as you're starting to push towards level 60, you're going to want to look to join a house. Now, houses um, are basically like guilds. And when a guild um, is formed, a group of players, they can declare war on various fiefs. Currently, it's closed for Christmas, but... For example, they could de declare war on um, Kova, Kova, Kova Flava, can't even say it. And they could declare war on this fief, and then during the territory war events, they would have the option to try and capture it from whoever currently owns it. And the people, the house, that could, the guild that currently owns it, will try and defend it. And if they capture that, this area would then become friendly territory for you, because they would then own it. They would also own the resource points that are located within that bit of land they can mine there much cheaper and much more efficiently so owning land can be useful they can also do fief quests there so that's the territory war side of things but again something that you're probably not going to be touching on at least initially but resource farming may be something that you do want to do for example here we are just at the imperial logging camp it's going to give you a little bit of pine timber this is just a very basic one. Oh, it's only a quest related one let's see if we can head up and do i have any requisition tokens we do Let's head up then and find ourselves um, a bit of land. Maybe this little iron mine over here. We will, of course, stop at the derelict hut along the way. Anything interesting? Anything? No. One, one iron bar for crafting. So, we have just uh, arrived at our resource node. This sandstone quarry here. You can see on the map I've kind of moved from Turovaros, moved across down the road, and I'm now at this little sandstone quarry. So, all I need to do is get close enough, click on it, and it'll allow me to interact with it. The amount of labour I have down here, so this is how much I will extract per gather, is slightly dependent on the number of units I bring with me. So for example, if I go and have a look, you see currently I've got my iron caps and my domain with me. You'll see if I click on one of these and go over to their statistical information, you'll see this unit gives me 3.92 labour. So for example, if I then took my woodcutters, my serfs and my pipe militia with me, I would have more labour and I would get more resources per gather at this resource site. 
But of course, I would consume more food on the journey here, and I would more than likely move slower as well. So it's sort of a bit of a balance. Um, a good way, uh, in, on my main account, I actually have a unit of serfs because the peasants seem to have higher labour values than some of the more elite military units. So anyway, we're now at the sandstone quarry. I'm going to use gather, and you'll see it'll start a 20 second operation. And you can see I'm starting to gather this sandstone here, so 240 of it, 213, and you get per tick, and that is getting loaded into my wagon now as we're doing this. I do pay uh, bronze to do this, so gathering does cost bronze. That is something that you do have to bear in mind, so don't run out of money completely. But it can be worth it because ultimately when you craft it is often a cheaper thing. You'll see that should have been loaded onto my wagon, and as you see it has, I've now got 2,064 sandstone. There we go, so I've managed to gather some resources in the open world, and I can then use that for various crafting things later on. But anyway, so let's head back to the city. So that's all I've got for you in this video. I've just switched back over to my main account now because I just wanted to show you briefly sort of what you can ultimately get to. You know, I've got sort of uh, 42 units, all varying degrees of levels. I've got some gold in here. I've got up to the sort of the final tier, some, some five star units here, like with my Rattled Rangers. There really is a lot of potential in this game. And as a free game, it really is pretty awesome fun to play. Things might sometimes seem pretty difficult at the beginning. You may at times feel sort of outclassed by higher tier enemies. It is worth grinding through to get there because ultimately, in the end, it is a really fun game. And once you start to get the hang of it, it is well worth the time you put into it. If anyone has any questions about sort of anything I've touched on in today's video or um, anything else sort of you know beginner related that you feel I've missed or you're unsure about, put it down in the comments. I'll be sure to get back to you. I'll give you a reply try and sort of help you out because we really need to try and get new players into this game and sort of get the population growing again so thanks for watching guys hopefully it's been useful be sure to subscribe to the channel for a load more conqueror's blade content and i shall see you guys all on the next video